Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 99 with me Craig Barton. Now you might think it's a little bit early in the academic year to start worrying about GCSE uh, revision but flipping heck it's not because they are on the horizon and our staff are starting to panic a bit and our kids well, perhaps not panicking as much as the staff, but uh, the fear is starting to be there. So I'm always on the lookout for, for innovative ways to make the revision process um, that bit more exciting, but also that bit more useful because um, the number of lessons uh, is, is ticking away quickly and it's about making the most of that time. Now, um, the reason I've chosen this particular resource is because it fits in with a, a new technique that we're trying in our maths department um, and this resource certainly helps support it. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll talk you through the resource itself and I'll, I'll show you what we're doing as a maths department and then uh, see, see if it's something that you might find useful yourself. So here they are, GCSE Mathematics Grade C Number Revision Cards and that is part of a group that goes along with the Algebra Revision Cards, Data and Shape Revision Cards, all of which have been kindly produced and uploaded by j 2 n uh, so let's uh, let's take a look at these. So I've downloaded everything. Uh, the number cards, you can see there's six topics and they are percentages, uh, H, uh, highest common factor, place value and so on. Uh, algebra cards, you have loads within here, 13 topics covered in the algebra cards. Uh, in the shape cards, you get eight topics covered and in the data cards, you get four, four topics covered. Now each one um, is a very, very simple PDF. And if I just start with an algebra one here, this is the um, algebraic indices one. And you can see on this particular one, there are four questions. And then crucially, um, on the other side, there are the exact same four questions, but you'll notice there's chance for a bit of student reflection. Now, the idea here is a very, very simple one, but I believe a very effective one. And that is the students are given these cards, and if you print them out, um, ideally stick them kind of double-sided so that there's this, uh, this, uh, this is on one side and on the other side is, uh, is the student version. And the idea is in the classroom, uh, the teacher models the perfect way to complete these questions. Um, and perhaps they do a commentary for it and the students have a chance to annotate and all that kind of stuff. But crucially, um, on this card, the student has the perfect way of answering that question written down. Uh, they then take the card home and the idea is that they complete the other side of this card without flicking back to see the perfect answer. Now, there's a couple of a uh, couple of things, um, kind of couple of justifications for doing this. The first is that it's my belief, and this is backed up by um, by some limited research in this field, but by students actually writing down the perfect answer, even if in a sense they're they're just copying off the teacher, it boosts their confidence because there's something psychological about the fact that they have written down the perfect way to do questions. And then, of course, when they take it home, they're, they're approaching these questions thinking to themselves, well, I've already answered this properly in class. I've also got the fact that if I just flick over the card to the other side, I've got the support mechanism there knowing that the right answer is within reach. But in fact, I'm just going to have a go at this because I've done it once before. Can I have a go? Can I, uh, can I succeed in it a second time around? And it's one of those ideas that I, I was a bit skeptical of at first, but it's had a huge impact on our students. So I'll talk to you a bit more of that, about that in a second. So there's loads of these. Um, here's one on uh, drawing quadratic graphs. So again, the teacher will model perfectly how to do this, perhaps explaining the importance of knowing that minus one squared is positive one and how they're going to get that. Then plotting the points on smooth curve, not missing out any points, recognizing how to spot if a point is wrong and all that kind of stuff. And then again, the students take it home, complete this version and do a bit of self-reflection and this carries on we've got number ones a classic utility bills question here and again that would take a really nice clear structured answer that it's important the students see and um, it's modeled by the teacher the students copy it down they then take it home and can they complete at uh, the other side and again there's marks on all of these these are past paper exam questions so again the teacher can emphasize where exactly each of those marks are coming from just show you a couple of others Everybody's favorite topic, bearings, a tricky three mark bearing question. Again, that the teacher can model to the students and then the students can complete at home. And you have loads of data ones as well. So just a classic um, averages uh, from groups frequency tables there. Uh, a tasty seven marks that the students would need to get. And again, the teacher can model that. The students copy it down on their card, taking notes where necessary, take the card home and try and complete the other side of it. So as I say, there's loads of these. Um, one for uh, topics covering data, geometry, number and algebra and this this fits in particularly well with something we're doing at our school uh, which is um every, once a week um in from february onwards and we're getting year 11s in the hall and we're going to take them through um three topics a week 
um, and we're going to give them exam questions. I'm going to do it exactly like this. Um, I'm going to model how to do it, commentating, not just um, just kind of writing the answers down in silence, but kind of commentating how I, as a mathematician, would approach it, highlighting keywords and all that kind of stuff. The students are going to copy all that down, making their notes, and then they're going to be given um, not the same question um, as in this resource, but um, related questions for them then to try at home. And our students are really, really engaging well with this idea of this modeling, this commentary, that goes along with it listening to the to the maths teacher getting that perfect answer down in their own writing and then taking it from there so this is a resource that really supports that and i'm glad to see it's not just us that are thinking that this is an effective policy so maybe this is something that you like to give it a go um, or if not the, these just as revision cards for the students to complete are certainly worthwhile and even though they say grade c on it there of course these grade c skills are the fundamentals that anyone hoping to get a grade b a or a star will need to have in place so they are suitable for the vast majority of students so what a wonderful resource thanks so much for sharing that um, and i shall be back with a resource of the week next week take care and bye for now